Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more on our XJS. Uh, today we're going to be fitting suspension dampers on the rear and on the front. The XJS, like a lot of Jaguars of the same era, had dampers with coil springs fitted over the top. Uh, so we're going to need to assemble that first before we start uh, mounting them to the car. So to fit the springs to the dampers, we're going to need a pair of these. These are actually, uh, these are from Jaguar, these are Jaguar's own, but uh, any type will do as long as they're strong enough to do the job. I wouldn't suggest you try doing it with uh, bits of wood or a pry bar because there's a lot of energy in a spring and uh, it's, uh, it's just waiting to do your damage. So use the proper tool and be safe. Okay, so those are uh, firmly fitted. I'm going to use the, uh, uh, the gun to tighten them up simply because I can. You can use a spanner, it's just the same. Now we have a few different dampers here. Um, that's a basically, that's, that's a replacement for a standard unit, but we can also offer adjustable ones uh, where we can actually uh, set the, uh, the, the, the bounce and rebound pressure by adjusting the control wheel at the base. And also we do this fella, which has the same adjuster, but you can actually adjust the ride height as well. So if you're using stronger springs, uh, you can adjust it to uh, accommodate uh, the, the heftier springs, so get the ride height where it is, or if you've got a, a kitchen sink in the boot and you want to go touring, uh, you can jack the car up a little bit so it keeps your exhaust on the car and not uh, sitting on the uh, top of a sleeping policeman. They're actually very good and they're British made, which is rather nice, because these, uh, particularly those, because it's, I mean, we get people saying that, uh, you know, that the, the different springs don't always sit at the same height yeah. as original. So basically, if you fit these, you can set the height to whatever you want. Yeah. So if you can pull the car down if you're going racing, or you can jack it right up if you're touring. You know, it, they're, they're a great piece of kit. Changing the dampers isn't, uh, it's not too arduous, but you need to make sure the car's well supported and supported on the, the chassis uh, so that the, the suspension arm is free because we'll need to jiggle it about a little bit to get the dampers out and then back in. The suspension on the XJS, it's all dangling in the breeze so it's going to catch all of the road dirt, uh, everything from the puddles, so it, it all gets a bit crusty and the bolts will end up being quite tight. So what I've done over the last couple of days, I've given this a good soaking in uh, release oil and I'm just going to give it another quick squirt uh, before I start dismantling. I've just put a jack uh, under the, uh, the rear suspension just to lift it a tiny little bit just to take the weight off the dampers. I've positioned it just to one side so I'm not resting on the grease nipple because it's very easy to break those off. So that's the bottom support removed and so the, uh, both the dampers are free at the base. I've just got to relieve them now at the top and I can get them out. Well, that's the first one out. Something that's easily missed that's quite important. The top bushes on these damper units, they have a little a uh, little spacer inside there which needs to go back in on the new units. If you leave that out you get a really annoying rattle and it's not very nice. These dampers are not, uh, not leaking but they've, uh, they've had a good life uh, and they're, they're one of those things that can get overlooked if they're not picked up on, a, on an MOT test for having, having leaks. Uh, you tend to live with them but obviously the, um, the damping effect uh, deteriorates over time so new ones always a good move okay so we're ready to go back together I've got the damper units I've got the little spacers mustn't forget those I've got new nuts and bolts uh, nylock nuts they're uh, one-time use only so new nylocks every time I'm just going to put a little bit of copper grease here and there just to aid disassembly in future times hopefully not by me there we go right we can offer that in there's a little bit of uh, doing stuff by feel with these. It's even worse on E-types, there's far less space. But, so this is, this is really quite, quite glorious. I can get my whole hand up 
to the nut. I've got the bottom mounting in. Uh, just want to mention there's a little spacer that goes on the front there, um, which uh, sometimes if it falls out and disappears in the dirt, if you're doing this thing uh, outside, um, it's easily missed but you need to make sure it goes back in so that the spacing top and bo bottom is equal. The washers that go on the bottom of the dampers, they're quite large. There's a reason for that. Uh, it's just in case that if the bush fails, the damper can't actually slide off over the top of the nut because it'll be held in place by the big penny washer. I've uh, brought the trolley jack back into play so that I can jack the suspension up so that it's very roughly at its running position when it's on the road so that when I tighten up the, the nuts that hold the uh, top and bottom bushes in place the bushes won't be under any strain when it's at the midpoint. So that's it, end of side one. Just got to do it all again on the other side because you'll always fit these as, as a set. So I'm going to put the wheel on and that's it, job done. We'll just finish off with the big bar. And then use a torque wrench to set them to what the book says. Right, well we're going to have a look at the fronts now. Now fortunately the fronts are a lot easier than the rears. Um, with a bit of luck it's undoing just a couple of bolts. Uh, and if everything's free, that's it, we can get it off. Now fortunately the, uh, the top bolt on the damper quite accessible from uh, under the bonnet so we undo that hopefully the whole thing will now fall out. So out with the old, in with the new. Okay so new damper going in, uh, we've got the correct number of uh, washers and uh, buffers there. So. Just going to slide that in. They're a pressurised damper, so these ones need a little bit of compressing and a bit of jiggery pokery to get them in, but that's in position now. So top mounting with the washer, the buffer and the special washer on the top. And there's a, there's a full nut, which we'll tighten up, and a lock nut to go on the top to keep everything secure. Right, so we're going in with a new nut and bolt, as we did before, uh, and that's it. Everything will be bolted up and we're good to go. There we go. Well, that's it all done. Just the two mounting points. Put the wheel back on, and we're good to go. A um, lot easier than, uh, than changing the rears. Obviously, we're going to change a pair, and, and again, just make sure the car's well supported. Um, it's a heavy car. You don't want it on trapping your fingers. The last thing you want is to have it on your head. Well, that's the wheel back on, uh, but finish off uh, with a torque wrench to the correct spec. OK, well, thanks for watching. And don't forget, we're giving this car away, so look out for that golden ticket. Keep a look out for the next video where we're going to be fitting quad halogen headlamps to this car.